a great experience for me. Uh, it all started with a question about, uh, you know, was there a new technology that I could help commercialize? Because that's what I love to do. And I called a friend of mine up and he said, yeah, uh, some folks at uh, RTI International had developed a thin film thermoelectric technology that had some u unique applications. Uh, back in the early 2000s, all the Intel microprocessors were running uh, very hot and uh, they could not continue to increase the speed of the microelectronic uh, of the microprocessors so uh, because just because they were getting so hot so this technology had the application potential to solve that problem so I called RTI uh, and uh, they were very interested in trying to commercialize this and I joined with uh, Jesko von Wintheim who is now also a, a professor here at uh, at Duke University and uh, we actually raised uh, a, a lot of money and spun the company out of there and, and uh, recently sold it to a, a much larger company uh, called Laird PLC. Well, it, it, it happened about three or four years ago, but it actually started about eight years ago when I did some uh, guest uh, speaking for Duke and actually co-taught a course uh, on uh, technical marketing for uh, Duke. Uh, just as an experiment and then about three or four years ago I, I thought about I've always loved to coach and kind of teach and you know part of being a business leader is doing those sorts of things anyway so I thought uh, it would be interesting and I've you know it started in the MENG program and I teach a course called Business Fundamentals for Engineers and as an engineer I never knew enough about business and so I, you know I thought why wouldn't the engineers want to know a lot about business right, right. And uh, so I proposed a, a, pro a program to uh, Brad Fox and Jeff Glass, and, and they signed up and let me uh, kind of find my way the first couple years uh, in, in that, and uh, eventually the course got well received and it was made uh, a required course for the program. So that's how it started, and I just uh, wanted to do something to, you know, working with students always keeps you active. and. On the forefront of things and and so as a teacher you're always learning and uh you know it's part of something you need to do your entire life so that's why i did it okay thank you yeah that's kind of an interesting question because every company has a product uh some are hardware some are software some are services some are other things that are less tangible. And so you always have, there is always a product in every company, there's a product. It could be you, right? You are the product of that company or, or something you're thinking of. So um, I think that, um, you know, product management is all about kind of being a mini CEO of, of, of your product. You're responsible for everything. Uh, the trick is typically in product management, you don't have the, uh, the authority and the direct reports to make it happen. So you've got to be, you know, fairly adapt at working throughout the organization to, to make things happen on time, at a profit, you know, working with customers, working with sales and marketing, work with manufacturing and engineering. So it's, it's kind of a very dynamic situation. It's really a great preparation for somebody who wants to be a CEO. I think the beauty of the MEM program is that you've got somebody already with great technical depth in a very specific area, right? It could be, uh, you know, biomedical engineering, it could be civil engineering, it could be electrical engineering, computer engineering. Uh, so they've got great technical depth, and what we're trying to do in the MEM program is give them uh, the business aspects, the business side of that. So you've got somebody who comes out of that program with great balance and, and great... Uh, Great opportunity to use, uh, you know, their strategic thinking as well as tactical capabilities. Engineers are very tactical. Business people need to be more strategic. So you've got somebody that's got a real balance coming out of the, that uh, organization uh, who's, who can adapt to both technical challenges as well as market challenges and customer challenges. And that's what people, uh, you know, there's a lot of value in that. Somebody who's always keeping the customer in mind while they're solving the technical problem. You know, as we know, it's great to have technology, but if nobody wants it, nobody needs it, it doesn't help you. So 
MEMers, you know, they come out with that in mind, and, and I think that that's a big value to the companies that hire them. That's kind of a hard question because <laughs> I've not really been surprised, uh, I would say, uh, because my expectation levels are always pretty high. You know, I expected the MEM students and the MENG students that I teach to be, you know, extremely bright, uh, springly, extremely uh, dynamic uh, people. And, you know, everybody's got their own personality and they've got their own culture because it's a very international uh, group that we have here. Uh, and I'm very, you know, you know, just happy to be a part of that because I think that, again, I learn a lot from the students probably more than they learn from me in some cases, but I really enjoy that, that interaction and, uh, and, and be able to give everybody international flavor to, to what it is they do. And, and so nothing's really surprised me because, you know, I expect Duke students to be, uh, you know, top students and uh, I would say nobody's disappointed me so far, so. Thank you. Well, I, I think the first semester uh, of, of any program is about adapting to your environment, okay? Adapting to the other international students that are here because you've got students from everywhere. And most, and a lot of the students who come here have not been, uh, you know, not, not all of them, but a lot of them have not been outside of their country. And, and I think that this, you know, coming into Durham, North Carolina, adapting to uh, the university, there's a lot going on outside of the university too, here locally in Research Triangle Park and Raleigh and uh, Chapel Hill. So you've got three great universities. Uh, you know, and, and you know, my expectation is the students actually get outside of kind of the the uh, shell of Duke and, and try to experience more local uh, the local flavor here in North Carolina. And I see a lot of students doing that. You know. Some travel up to the mountains, some go down to the beach, some go to different, uh, you know, join different people. And, and uh, you know, I think, you know, joining some of these clubs help, you know, like the consulting club, the, the international club, all those things help people. Uh, and I see a lot of the students uh, come in that have some language challenges. And by the end of the semester, they're all really doing quite well. It's always great to see them progress with their language skills and, and and you know, just starting to understand the culture, and, and so that's my big expectation. Really, is is really seeing how you know, uh, watching the students uh, adapt, and and uh, you know, I, you know, technically, you know, everybody can read and write and do things well, and and and, and you know, particularly scientific things, you know, because they're all coming from technical backgrounds. The real challenge is, can you can you go to the business side? And uh, the big, big change for everybody is, you know, most of these classes, you have to participate, right? It's not just the professor lecturing to you, but it's you getting up, making presentations, improving your presentation skills, your language skills, your communication skills. And being an MEM, that's really a big chunk of what it's all about, right? Being able to communicate your ideas and thoughts to people and influencing people to, um, to some of the things that you want to do and some of the directions you want to take your company. So I think that that's, you know, doesn't necessarily answer your question. I don't know that's three things, but it's, I think it's a good overview of kind of my expectations. And what I look for is just progress. And, and, you know, generally I just see it across the board and it's great to see everybody interacting the way they do. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, get involved in entrepreneurship early, uh, you know, try to find a mentor who really will, you know, encourage you and guide you, uh, you know, learn how to make mistakes uh, on somebody else's money so that when you actually do go out and spend, your, you know, your money or, or your investor's money that you've, you've already had enough mistakes to, uh, to uh, that, you know, really have some real learning because you don't really learn. I mean, I learned something every new startup. I've had four startups and every new startup I've learned something new and valuable. And uh, I think that that really uh, helps you understand, uh, you know, what entrepreneurship is. 
and you know, at a university, it's easy to talk about entrepreneurship, but it's not, um, you know, it's not uh, that easy in the real world, right? You have to, you either have to find money, cash. As I tell my classes, cash is like oxygen. Without without it, you die, right? So you have to find money. You have to uh, convince people to give you money, or you have to use your own money. And there's nothing like having a company and having payroll. And on Friday night, you've got to you've got to make payroll every Friday night. You've got to pay your workers. Uh, you know, uh, you've got to uh, and to do that, you've got to be generating profits to do that. So, and you know, the last thing I'd say is profits not a bad word. It is really what every company needs to to really move forward and to grow and uh, even not-for-profits make profits they just call themselves not-for-profits but they pay everybody salaries they they you know they invest in the future of the organization um, their stakeholders are a little different than normal financial stakeholders in a real company but but nonetheless everybody in not-for-profits wants to see those not-for-profits get bigger and larger which means they have to bring more revenue in, and and you've got to deliver your product, whatever it is, to the to the marketplace, and encourage them to do that. So, um, I think that that is, um, you know, at Hatch, what we're trying to do is give uh, the students an opportunity to explore that space as best they can, and and uh, and kind of get a flavor for that. So, with our coaches on call, which is we have local, um, you know, accountants and lawyers and CEOs who are willing to come in and talk to the students. They get a chance to do that, and, and we really want to expand that activity more for, for the students here at Duke. So. Well, first off, there's a lot of great restaurants in Durham, uh, and uh, some are more expensive than others. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list an expensive one, and I'm going to list a very inexpensive one. Uh, the expensive one that I like is called Four Square. I don't know if you've heard of that, but Four Square is a it's an old older home, uh, just off of 15501 uh, business, uh, going from downtown Durham out to what used to be the old older shopping mall, and uh, it's a beautiful old home. It kind of reminds me of my childhood, some of the older homes in my hometown out in Indiana. And you go in there, and they've got white tablecloths, and it's very nice and and very fancy, but it's fancy but kind of comfortable and uh, not stuffy, but the food's fantastic. Uh, and, and, and that's one of my favorite expensive places to eat at Durham. Uh, now I have a little, uh, everybody's got their favorite hole in the wall kind of place that they love to eat. And mine's actually over on the east side of Durham. It's called the Italian Pizzeria. It's in a not so nice shopping mall, but they make the best, uh, you know, Philly steak and cheese sandwiches anywhere. And so, uh, you know, you're more likely to go to lunch with me there than you are to Four Square for dinner. Uh, I really love that place, and, and uh, the guys who run that are Italians from New York City who moved here, and they've got that great. You know, you you walk in there, you feel like you're in New York City talking to the to the the owner and, and the people in there, and and uh, so yeah, so those are my two favorite places. <laughs>